Hello again everyone, welcome back to PTEC Chemistry Channel. So my name is Dr. On and in this tutorial video, I'll be uh, showing you an experimental tutorial video. This is something called a Hoffman voltmeter. Uh, it's basically an electrolysis setup. I have an electrolyte, which is one molar sulfuric acid. So it's 1.0 mole per DNQ sulfuric acid. Sulfur acid is our electrolyte, so it's the stuff that we are trying to electrolyze. And here I have a power unit, so I don't know which one is positive, which one is negative, uh, but it should be pretty obvious later on, especially when we look at the product that we are going to get here. Uh, we're going to get the H plus ion, so the H plus ion in the sulfur acid will go to the it's a positive ion, so it goes to the cathode, which is the negative electrode, because positive ions are attracted to the negative electrode, which is called the cathode. And what happened at the cathode is reduction happened at the cathode, so we get a red cat, reduction happens at cathode. Well, RIC basically is the acronym for reduction happening at the, well, reduction is the gaining of electrons, and oxidation is a loss of electrons. So, so yeah, it should be pretty obvious later on because we're going to get hydrogen at one electrode and oxygen at the other electrode. We are essentially splitting water, we are essentially electrolyzing water and we know that the volume of hydrogen and oxygen, when the water split up to give you hydrogen and oxygen, it's going to be 2 is to 1. So in terms of volume ratio, it's very obvious we're going to get something which is double the volume of the other one as time progresses. Okay, so let's have a look at the experimental setup. We have a power socket here power pack actually so that is power on I'm just gonna put this onto the onto the setup here okay so not too sure if you can see the thing here All right so you'll be dealing with electricity you gotta be very sure that um, you take every single precaution possible okay we don't touch with our bare hand we use these crocodile clips these are rubberized rubberized or plastic end here so we're gonna put this here there is like a metal clip at the bottom here it is connected to a platinum electrode there's uh, there is expensive metal uh, there will be the electrode that actually allows the conduction of electricity and kind of split up your stuff here just gonna turn on the power uh, and as you could see, if I zoom in a little bit, you could hopefully see some bubbling. So you could see the bubbling. So why are there bubbles? There are bubbles because you get gases being formed. Uh, as soon as I turn on the power, then the bubbles are being produced. I could immediately see that I get a lot more volume here than here. Uh, the volume of the volume produced, the volume of gas produced here is a lot more than here. This is going to be our double volume compared to this single volume because this has to be the hydrogen here, which means this, this electrode here is where the H plus, the cation goes to here. So it's attracted to the negative electrode. So this must be the cathode where the hydrogens uh, get produced. H plus plus electron giving you hydrogen gas. And this is uh, the hydroxide hydroxide present in the water molecule of course you know sulfuric acid is made up in water as well so you're gonna get OH minus giving you oxygen gas here uh, later on we are collecting the gas here later on we can release this outlet and kind of test for the gas test for hydrogen here and test for oxygen they're all part of this 14 to 16 years old chemistry content uh, what I'm gonna show you here is that um, so as soon as I turn on the power so there is current there is uh, electricity and therefore there will be electrolysis. What happens if I allow this to stop right now? If I turn off the power right now, so I'm just going to turn off the power and you can see hopefully that the bubble stop. So in terms of observations, why does the bubble stop? Because there's no more electrolysis. Why? Because I'm no longer passing any electrical current through the electrolyte. I'm going to turn the power back on. And as soon as I turn it back on, then the bubbles get produced again because electrolysis starts to happen again. So how about how about if we if we record the time? So the longer the time that you allow this to continue, the more products you will collect. So the amount of product that you get, the amount of stuff you get from electrolysis, is a result of uh, time. So the longer time you allow the electrical current to flow through, 
therefore the, the greater is the total charge of electricity that passes through and therefore you get more volumes uh, of product because you get more electrolysis happening. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to increase the current. Not too sure if I can. I oh, this is cranked up to the max already. I'm just going to decrease the current and hopefully you can see what's going on. So just now this was maximum. So I'll go from the maximum. This was the maximum current. So look at how rapid the bubbling uh, is. Okay, I am just going to decrease the current a little bit. So this is the current decreased by a little bit. So it's getting a bit slower because lesser current means lesser charge, lesser charge passing through, therefore lesser electrolysis. I'm just going to decrease it a notch further. So this is current being decreased a notch further and it's getting even slower. So how much product you get over time depends on how much current actually passes through. I'm going to decrease the current even further and you can see it's much, much slower. So what you see is you do not see the colorless gases. What you see is the, is the rate of the formation of gases. The rate of reaction is basically a topic that will come afterwards in a rate of reaction topic. Uh, but rate basically is how fast these gases are being produced in the same time. So I'm going to decrease the current a notch further and it just get to a stage where uh, it's really, really slow now. Okay, I'm just going to rapidly increase the current all the way to the very top again so that you can see the huge contrast between small amount of current versus a large amount of current. You will learn in physics that charge, charge is Q, Q equal to current, current in amperes multiplied by time for which you allow the current to flow through, Q equal to IT. So, you know, current and time, they do affect the rate of uh, electrolysis. And um, yeah, speaking of which, you could see that this volume here is a lot bigger than this one. In fact, this is about approximately double of that. This is experimental errors. Uh, I mean, these are real experiments, so they are bound to be experimental errors, like, you know, some air bubbles trapped inside here at the beginning, for instance, like oxygen. Oxygen is the one which is smaller volume compared to the hydrogen. So the oxygen could slightly dissolve in water. They don't very much like to dissolve in water, but we know. We know that we have seen oxygenated water in the market. So they, there is a way to actually dissolve oxygen in water. And that is why, you know, your, your fish could actually breathe in water because your fish like us are, are living things and we live off oxygen. So when, they, when you think about how fish breathe, they actually dissolve oxygen in water as well. So not to say a lot, but oxygen can dissolve a little bit in water. So you might not get two is to one ratio completely because these are in water after all. I mean, sulfur acid has water. So these are possible sources of error. Uh, but anyway, so what you could see obviously is this level would decrease because these uh, sulfuric acid, which contain mostly water, oops, hang on. This sulfuric acid, which mostly contain water, they are being electrolyzed, they're being split up to give you the hydrogen gas at the cathode. Hydrogen gas is producing a bigger volume compared to the oxygen gas. Uh, so this is the hydrogen gas, this must be the oxygen gas produced there. I'm just going to let it be, but uh, what could appear is this could be very well an alternative to practical kind of questions, where you could be asked to plot the volume of gas against time, volume of gas against current applied, where you could be asked to test for these gases, where you could be asked to label which side is cathode, which side is anode. Well, you know this is cathode because the hydrogen volume is produced in a much greater amount than the uh, volume of oxygen produced at the anode. Remember, the H2SO4 contains uh, H plus SO4 to minus, and then it has got H plus and OH minus from the water. But then the H plus and the H plus, they are the same H plus. They're going to go to the cathode because cations are attracted to the cathode, which are negative electrodes. And then they undergo reduction at the cathode because red cat reduction happens at cathode, oil rig. Oxidation is loss of electron that happens at the anode, and then we have reduction, which is gain of electrons at the cathode. There. So you should be able to write half the questions to show the formation of hydrogen at the cathode and the formation of oxygen at the anode. There. All right, so I think that's it really for this uh, short uh, experimental tutorial video. Uh, this concept is easily extendable to even uh, advanced level, IB level, or any 16 to 18 years old chemistry, even beyond the current 14 to 16 years old. 
concepts that are being covered at this elementary level. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to click the button on the bottom right to subscribe to my channel. Follow me at ptet.chemistry on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, as well as Telegram to get connected. I'll see you in the next uh, tutorial video, I guess. All right.